Hey, this is the 1955 BMW R25 III. Gonna do a little quick walk around. So this bike, um, I'm the third owner. Previous owner had it since the early 60s. I bought it about a year ago, or actually about two years ago. This bike was restored in around 1980, and then it was ridden just a handful of miles and then it was put into, I guess what you would call a hibernation type state um, by the previous owner and stored on display inside his house. So it sat in a climate controlled area for many, many years until when I purchased it and um, put it back on the road. What I did is um, the previous owner helped me over the course of a week or so along with some advice of some very notable BMW um, people in the BMW community such as Veach. Um, if you know anything about BMW, I'm sure you've sure heard of him. Um, he used the proper oils and everything to replenish everything. Everything was inspected as far as the motor and stuff before we started it up. And this thing usually I will turn the fuel on and use the tickler, th probably three or four pumps, key on, and I crack the throttle just maybe like an eighth, and it will start the first kick, usually every time, even after it's been sitting for a couple months. I did have to put a new battery in it. I had to source the correct battery. I do have the other battery that has the Bosch logo on it. Um, I do have the correct fuel pepcock. This is not the correct, this is a later version. The original one to this bike I do have and it's perfect. They were prone to leaking so it, at the recommendation of others I put this one on because I did plan on you know riding the bike once in a while and I didn't want it to leak. I did replace the, the fuel line with the correct fuel line after it had been stored all those years. Um, a new plug and things like that but mainly I didn't had to do very little. Um, the seat is the original seat. It does have, does have some, some splitting. I've tried to put some stuff to preserve it, but over time this thing thing happens. I didn't want to put like an aftermarket one on there though, so that's the original seat. Um, has not been restored. The handlebars also are the original bars, have not been rechromed. They do have a few um, blemishes, I guess you could call them. Some little nicks and things. Can't really, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but so those have not been rechromed. The pipe has also not been rechromed. It does have discoloration from heat. Um, the chrome through this area is a little poor. Some scuffing where the foot would hit. The rear pipe is perfect. Um, not no dings or anything like that. So these these things that I'm pointing out now um, would be the things that I would consider this bike from being perfect. I, I would rate this bike as probably a nine or nine and a half on a scale of ten. Ten being something that you would have to walk around um, very, very closely to find anything wrong whatsoever. So there's very tiny things, um, um, very, very tiny. Don't know if you can see them on the camera, but very tiny little spots where a paint maybe has kind of scraped or something. But I mean, these are things that you really have to look for um, that I can barely. I don't even know if they're showing up in the camera, but. Um, pretty much the most notable thing that's wrong with the bike, I would say, would be this little ding right here. It's very hard to see, but uh, what that is, is this tank is actually not original to the bike. When this bike was restored, the previous owner, was a, he, who is, by the way, a very notable um, person in the BMW community, he has owned hundreds of BMW bikes. He had a dealership. He did restorations. He's very, very knowledgeable, and he still is online on some forums and stuff. And uh, he had a new old stock R25 three gas tank that was factory painted from BMW. And he chose to put that tank on the bike instead of using the original tank. So this tank is not original to the bike, but it is a new old stock painted tank from BMW. So this is unrestored paint, which is, you know, pretty much almost perfect with the exception of this. But he thought even with that, this was a, the opportunity to show such a great you know new old stock piece so um, anyways has all the correct levers everything's correct on the bike that I know of um, 
the Speedo, as you can see, has 30 miles on it. When I got the bike, it had about 15. I put 15 miles on it, taking it to a few shows and just kind of taking it for a small ride here and there just to give it some road time. Um, the original, you know, key, of course, it has a mirror, which is probably an accessory. It's an Albert. Um, a swan neck I guess you would call it I'm not sure I think the guard is like an optional thing I'm not sure if it came on the bike has the original headlight Bosch um, glass lens all the lights work the euro lamp and the headlamp and everything works as it should um, it has Metzler tires on it they're the correct um, size and everything these tires are 25 years old or so they're they're no, not real brittle. They're still pliable. There is very, very small, tiny cracks in the sidewall. I don't know if you can even see them in the video, but um, they're still good enough that I don't have a problem riding the bike. You know, just in town and things like that. Um, but they're pretty much brand new. I mean, they only have 30 miles on them. So, um, anyways, um, the motor is correct to the bike. Um, I don't really know if you can call numbers matching type thing, but it is, you know, I don't know, BMW, if the numbers actually match, I'm not, I'm not clear on that. Um, I guess I could probably check that. Um, 281. Um, yeah, actually it is the numbers matching. So here we have 313, um, 281, and that is also the number on the VIN tag. So, um... As you can see, everything's really, really clean. The engine's very clean. I mean, I do ride this bike once in a while, so this bike is not just a showpiece. So, I mean, I've tried to take photos along with this video of all the intricate little areas where you can see. And I mean, when you do use a bike, it's probably impossible to keep it completely like immaculate. I mean, you can probably eat off the engine, but I, he like said, it, it is a bike that you can take out and go for a ride on. It's not so perfect that you wouldn't want to do that. Um, Another thing here is the dust cover, I guess they call it, on the drive shaft, which I have that piece, but you have to take the shaft on it to get it on there, and I didn't really want to, I mean, I didn't think it was important enough to do, so if someone wanted to put that on, they could do that. It's the only thing I actually did not do. Um, you can see around the hub assembly, all the correct markings and everything. Um, the alloy wheels are very nice. Um, the original wheels, of course, tail light, it's the correct lens, original glass lens. The license plate is, is an authentic early German plate, but it's not correct to the bike. Put it on there just for looks, so, um, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, I do have the key to the tool. A compartment um, it goes with the bike of course and of course the original fuel pepcock and the original battery that was there and maybe a handful of other small little items but um, that all goes with the bike um, as you can see the VIN code R25-3 the year 1955 and then of course the VIN number which is 313281 um, so as you can see the bike is in excellent shape. Hopefully I've covered everything. If there's something I haven't covered or you have questions about the bike, um, you're, feel free to email or call me um, and try to answer as best of my ability. I do have contact with the original owner and um, so we, we do keep in contact once in a while and I can try to get any questions answered that I cannot answer. But um, see like around the controls here some dust there but tiny little I don't even know if you can see them but just some tiny little just little things just from these are the original controls these have not been repainted so the, the thing is there's a lot of pieces on this bike that if they were in to a certain standard or higher he would just reuse instead of you know re-chroming or repainting or whatever so if it was a piece that was a nice shape that you know was above a certain level to his opinion then he would reuse it so um, so that's the bike. Again, if you know anything about R25s, they, these were um, the bread and butter of BMW's production um, after World War II, and and they're 
they were pretty common in Europe, but they're very rare in the United States. I don't very rarely see any for sale. So it's a, it's a great um, piece of BMW history. And it's a great bike to ride. It's very smooth when I'm riding it. It's, it's, um, it is really, really smooth. It's probably one of the smoothest bikes I own. I own vi many vintage bikes, some Japanese, some German, um, British, things like that. And this bike is probably one of the smoothest bikes I own as far as the way it rides down the road. It's, it's very smooth. So, okay, I guess that's it. Thank you.